morning, guys! Yet another day in Dali, Yunnan, in southwest China. Uh, today we're going back to Kunming because we have a big thing coming up tomorrow. And uh, yes, maybe I look fresh, but I'm not because I slept way too little last night. And yeah, we just had to get up really early today because we had to get out of the house very soon. Um, what was I about to say? I have so many things I want to talk about, but I haven't made a list, so I'm afraid if I start talking, I'll just be like, blah, 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 you know, in a hundred different directions, and you guys will be like, what's she talking about? What's wrong with her? You know? <laughs> anyway, I'll just make a list, and then I'll make another video with that uh, later today, or maybe tomorrow. Uh, until then, just uh, come along with me. After breakfast, my friend's boyfriend came and picked us up and we all jumped into his car and started driving. You see here, my friend on the one side and her boyfriend is driving and we got another friend driving another car in the back. First we drove to another town where we had to pick up another friend. But when we arrived we got stopped by the police. First I was like, what is going on? But it seemed like they just wanted to check uh, the driver's license and then we were good to go. The day before my friend bought mooncakes for me be because in September they're going to celebrate the mid-autumn festival. So I tried these mooncakes out, there were different flavors. I especially liked this one with the flavor of pumpkin. I was actually really enjoying it and there was less sugar in that one compared to the other ones. I was also dancing to the rhythm of the rap music my friend's boyfriend was playing in the car. It was one big party actually. <laughs> For lunch we stopped at this famous place where we had the roasted duck of the Yunnan taste. So a little bit like the Peking duck but not really. It tasted, I would say quite the same but yeah you can still taste that it's a province difference if you might say. Oh yeah and this is how they clean, just throw everything on the floor and then <laughs> take it away. We also had other interesting dishes but I'm sorry I can't really explain what it was. But it was good though, so I liked it. When we arrived in Kunming, I went to my hotel, but first I had to watch this show in front of the phone store. Always a party. And I'm back in my little hostel here with the big room, six beds and no people. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna show you one thing. I was wondering... <laughs> What the F is this thing? I was trying to go over to close the window, but I had to jump this one first. Anyway, I couldn't close the window because I don't think you can close it. Um, yeah, so I just came back. I've been driving uh, with my friend and her friends, two cars and five people. Uh, the last five hours on the highway around and around the mountains uh, from Dali to Kuming. And, uh, yeah, let's be honest. So this, uh, I've said this before, my channel is a real channel and I'm being honest. So I had some really great days with my friend and uh, at her family's place. When they started talking their own dialect, I was just like, oh, it's probably not important. So I can just sit and do my thing and that's nice. So I have time to think and <clears throat> just be myself because even though I like to socialize, it's nice to have a little time on your own as well, right? But the problem here was just that from since yesterday afternoon, all afternoon, all evening and all day today, my friend has been taking me around with her friends. And again, that's a great idea, but the problem is here, guys, that they speak their own dialect and I cannot understand um, like 90% of it. It doesn't make any sense. It's basically Mandarin, but with funny words and um, tones and slang and stuff. And so I tried to be a part of it, you know, and smile and be like, hey, hey, thank you. Like, it's really great she's taking me out. We have been out in a park watching a beautiful view of the lake. We have been playing mahjong with the people. And today also, like, they're really friendly, but they just, I'm invisible. 
I'm literally invisible. My French is trying to translate into the Mandarin I understand. Or sometimes she's doing English as well. We jump a lot back and forth, English and Mandarin. Um, <clears throat> but her friends just don't really seem to care. They actually seem... they. Pre it feels like I'm not there. And I'm not sure if they're just really shy. I know that people can be shy and it's difficult because they're not used to using the Mandarin. So they think it's a little embarrassing with their tones or something, I don't know, or I'm just foreign and different, or they just don't give uh, an F about it. Um, so yeah, uh, like all afternoon and evening, I've been pretending, pretending to be social, but I haven't really said anything. I actually felt really lonely. So I feel lonely in a group of a lot of people, and that's so weird because I'm such a social person. I really like to socialize. I'm not a listener. I really like to talk, you know, and make new friends. But this was just, it made me sad. I could feel like when we were around, I was enjoying the things we were doing. But on the other side, I was always like, why does she not tell them to just speak the Mandarin? Because they all learn it. They all speak the Mandarin. They're all young people, you know. But they were just doing their own thing. And she was like, oh, it's not important what we're talking about anyway. But I'm like, uh, well, maybe it's not important. But then, you know, should I just go? I really just felt like, I don't know. So as I said, the experience was great. But I also felt kind of expelled from the conversation most of the time. So she's trying, She, as I said, she's translating. And sometimes they start, they speak Mandarin to me for like, I don't know, two minutes. Um, but yeah, it just makes me kind of feel down because I'm like, you know, am I not interesting enough? That's what I, I, I don't know. I just feel a little insecure about it. Anyway, that was, uh, that was just the, the tougher part, okay? <laughs> so what I said is that I just got back to my hotel now. Uh, my friend and her friends are staying in this really nice hotel and she was like, oh, it's only 300 RMB a night. And I was like, well, I can go and do mine for 20, so I don't know. I just like to save the money on accommodation, and I actually felt like a break as well. So it was a good excuse to just get out of there for a while. And, you know, then she can also concentrate about, well, <laughs> she did that already, but she can concentrate even more about having fun with her friends and not think too much about what I'm doing, if I'm enjoying it. Because I said in the morning, I was like, when they kept talking, I said, can't you just, can't you just speak Mandarin? I just, like, I feel so expelled from this conversation, but yeah, they forgot it like two minutes later. So anyway, then she can have fun with her friends and then we're going to go out all of us tonight and we'll see how that goes. Well, if, <laughs> if I'm not a part of the conversation again, I'm just going to bring my, bring my camera and, and film a little bit. So it's really interesting because I've been, uh, I've, like during this time, I, my friend, we've just been hanging out in, uh, in Beijing, uh, far away from her family and friends. So I didn't know much about her background. I kind of had the idea that she had money, but so in China, it's very important to have money and they always talk about money and it totally makes sense because life is tough here. Um, her family has a lot of money. Um, not, you know, they're not super rich, but for a family in a smaller town, they got quite a good amount of money. Um, and her friends, they have the same and you can kind of feel it. Uh, before I was like, ooh, it could be so interesting to meet these really new super rich uh, children. But I don't know, there's not a big difference. Like they just drive in nicer cars and they, they, buy, more to, they buy more food, but then they don't eat. They waste a lot of food. I felt quite bad about that. We were just like, they ordered a lot of food and then halfway through they're just like, okay, well, we should go now. And I was like, <laughs> why would you order so much food when you don't eat it? I felt kind of bad about that. Um, then they're smoking a lot. Oh my God, smoking so much and gambling. Holy moly. <laughs> the mahjong is very popular here and the young people just gambling a lot. Just my friends, um, my friends, friends, boyfriend he was gambling with his friends and we went to watch them and he just lost like 1500 in uh, in one afternoon and 1500 rmb that's a lot of money uh, for me anyway and uh, i was like whoa why would you do that but anyway i've also experienced 
the good life of China. Um, they're extremely friendly. They're uh, okay, as I said. So the problem is, like the young people, I didn't feel they were that friendly. It, I think it's mostly, as I said, because they're nervous or shy or they just what, whatever, you know. Um, but their parents are so friendly. Oh my God. Um, they, so they basically just... Uh, come they stuff you up with food all the time like can you have more and more and more and eat more and eat more and do you want to try this and this and this and that and we had tea and with the IE many different IEs and I talked to my friend's mother she's really interesting uh, because she's a critical thinker um, China stereotype is that Chinese people don't know how to think critically but this woman oh my god so she's working for the government it's quite funny she's going around to tell people if they forget to pay the taxes or if they you know if money disappear so many people don't like her but I really really liked her she was so interesting and she was talking about all these projects the government is doing for this uh, area of the country like this province so you know in China there is the main government uh, up in Beijing and then down here they have like uh, the province government and city government and like smaller 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 so it's like a whole hierarchy of different governments and different uh, politicians and stuff and uh, ministers and she told me how they are sending so because I asked okay I'm talking way too much sorry for that guys anyway you should just scroll if you don't want to see this but yeah I just thought it was really interesting because I we were out in the village and I saw how they were making or like you're working with the tobacco like drying it up and selling it and then drying it and selling it and how they were uh, like taking care of these silkworms and then selling it for silk later on you know and I was like, how did they start doing this? And she was like, oh yeah, well, it's because the government, they find these things that the, uh, the farmers, they can do. And so they come up with different projects and then the farmers can choose which one they want to try out. And then there are gonna be, uh, there is uh, different classes. So the teachers, they go to the villages and then they help them learn how to, ta how to do this or how to do that. I think it's so cool, it's such a good thing. Um, so yeah, that was really interesting talking to her mom and uh, we were making dumplings together you can see all this in uh, my video from yesterday and yeah no it was it's like overall it's a really good experience what I'm saying is just this language thing like it happens everywhere I know in Denmark as well we talk Danish when we're supposed to speak English with our friends and it makes totally sense but you know now I just really got to feel how it feels like I totally forgot how it was before when I didn't speak Mandarin but now I just really got the feeling and I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, I should stop talking and charge my battery because again, it's dying because I'm using it way too much. So I'll see you later, guys. <laughs> Yet another day is over and Lingling Ling is ready to go to bed. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I was supposed to join uh, the, the, all the guests for the wedding in a bar tonight. But because they went out to eat the hot pot really late, so my friend said, oh, maybe you just stay at home, we don't go drinking tonight because we're going to get up really early in the morning. And I was supposed to only go to the wedding tomorrow afternoon, but it seems like I've been invited to all the other games in the morning as well. So that sounds pretty interesting. I don't know what's going to happen, but my friend was like something about not opening the door for the groom and speaking in English because I don't think he knows how to speak in English to groom and uh, all these other games. So yeah, I, c I hope I can bring you guys along if you're ready for that. I'll definitely bring the camera and, and catch as much as I can. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. And also I called my mom and talked to her for like an hour. So I feel much better now. And I know that I'm very, very privileged to um, be able to experience all these things. And I'm so happy my friend has been taking such good care of me. So yeah, you know, there are always good and bad things for everything. Uh, anyway, it's almost midnight, so I should probably go to bed because I need to get up like 7, I think. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, I went to H&M to buy some clothes for tomorrow because I wasn't happy about my dress. I thought it looked cheap. Um, and I'm a little nervous about this because I know that these people have a lot of money, so I don't want to come there and look like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm overthinking. I know that. Anyway. I will see you guys tomorrow, so have a nice day or evening wherever you are, and Ling Ling is out. See ya and 再见! Mwah.